Um, I'm going to begin with you, uh, Peter. I was reading that when you first presented this screenplay to the potential backers, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, they were they, some weren't so weren't so sure. But with someone with like a mind like yours, as, as frustrating as it might be, not to get backing right off the bat, does that kind of make you feel that like actually I'm, I'm sitting on something that's actually probably worthwhile? Then? Not really. No. I mean, you just see it very pragmatically that if someone doesn't like it, try someone else. You just water off a duck's back. I mean, you don't. The more you do it, the more you just deal with rejection. You don't read too much into it. Um, there's no point trying to find out why someone doesn't want to do it. It's just, you're just right, next person. You know. I, 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 I was, before Ariana was saying that she was sourcing of your own performance art before, I was wondering if you had that to, to watch as a kind of guide and what research you were able to do to, to learn more about the kind of culinary themed performances that, that we see in the film. Mm. If I learn more, if I learn more with I this movie, research you did into, into mm -hmm. that world. Uh -huh. oh, I can say I'm not vegetarian, so uh, <laughs> uh, it was nice to. Uh, it was a provocation to to f play about uh, for for this uh, let's say category of people who have more respect for uh, let's say for the animals. <laughs> So the research, I didn't did so much. I, I didn't. <laughs> I just get the script and I was uh, sinking into the situations. <laughs> and how were those performance scenes like to shoot? Because you had to give so much to those scenes and physically as well. I mean, mm -hmm. was, I was just I was asking around before as well. On the day mm -hmm. sort of leading up to the shooting, was, you, was it almost quite daunting knowing that you had that on the horizon those, those days in set? Oh. Oh, I, I felt uh, quite uh, provoke, prov provoked, provoked. Um, I have a background as, as a dancer, so it wasn't hard for me for uh, sinking into the per performances. Um, <laughs> it was quite strong challenge because also the the, the, the blood scene, uh, the, the scene with the blood with the ambulatory, soup. yeah, soup, <laughs> the soup moment. Um, uh, I enjoyed, I can say. Um, I discovered more uh, uh, st strength and power. Uh, also Peter helped me with uh, giving me music, putting me music, putting me in the atmosphere of the, the situation. Yeah, and uh, it was okay. It was <laughs> nice. <laughs> And Peter, I was just asking about what you think it is about the food that can be used in film in a way. I saw a film at the London Film Festival called A Banquet as well, which also uses food in a way that kind of... Oh, that's yeah. uh, Ruth Paxton. Yeah, Ruth Paxton's film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. The way you would shoot like the bread and the spaghetti and croissants, it almost took on a kind of horror feeling about just the way the food made me almost feel quite unnerved. What do you think it is about food as something we, in real life, we celebrate, we all love eating and enjoying, but it ha has this ability on, on screen, doesn't it, to almost invoke some sort of anxiety? Well, I'm glad you feel anxious. Uh, yeah, because I guess that was my interest. That um, when you have autoimmune issues, like such as celiac disease, or you have allergies, that it's a poison, and that's the whole conundrum. That something that is so tasty for person A is death, potential death for person B, and. I, I just wanted to kind of explore that. It's a very difficult thing to explore, um, very difficult thing to get right, and obviously we, we don't know that. Um, you're only scratching the surface with it. I, I think the, the main thing was it just felt, it's not really being explored in a serious way. You know, I've seen or know of three films. Anaphylaxis is done as a joke and um, I think the only time I saw it done seriously was Ari Aster's film, um, Hereditary. Um, so yeah, I, I, again, I'm not trying to sort of go on a lecture series, but it's just trying to open up a conversation about things like that. Also things such as irritable bowel syndrome, even though this film is not about irritable bowel syndrome, but um, things which are taboo and you sort of think, well, why are they taboo? You know, these are human problems, we're all humans, why can't we it's a way of opening up about these things, which are normally seen as funny, without being seen as doing frat boy humour. 
Yeah, because last night in the pub, I was speaking about the movie to a few other critics that had seen it, and a couple of people said this is actually encouraging them to go to the doctor and sort of check up a couple of their own kind of gastric. Uh -huh. is, is that good? Is that, do you quite like that? Because you're saying, you know, it is a bit kind of taboo subject. That mm -hmm. it is, just even just last night, I found people talking about their own insides in a way that I've not actually <laughs> heard people talk about before necessarily uh, in kind of social situations. Well, I think that's good in a way. If you can provoke people to, to talk and open up, I mean, uh, to sh I mean, this film is all about shocking people uh, with your character, but I think it's, you know, I mean, something like torture porn, what kind of discussion is going to come after that, <laughs> you know? Um, but if you're shocking to provoke a discussion that is liberating somehow, that can kind of lead to sharing things that maybe two people both suffer from, you know, and that's, that's not a bad thing. Um, I remember when we were sending the script to people when we were filming and one person was telling me, yeah, I have able to talk about bowel syndrome. It's something I'm very shy to talk about. Um, so, I don't know, let's see. You know, we'll find out tonight what the pub is like, <laughs> what people are saying there. Yeah. My last question for both of you, really, because obviously the films are quite a unique kind of humour to it, and I find it really funny in parts. In the screening, I was in lots of people kind of laughing at, at the same moments. So I was wondering for both of you, do you find solace in knowing that when people sort of laugh at the same jokes that jokes you've written and jokes of moments you sort of performed in that there is a kind of collective sense of everyone being on the same page and it, it, you know there's not you're not feeling alone in your own mm -hmm. thoughts in your own humor in some regard mm. yeah that's a good feeling it's good that uh um, it's in a way it's universal you know the eating it's universal for everybody we it's Without the eating, you cannot live. So it's good to catch more collective people. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we influence them not to eat meat anymore. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> nice <laughs> or, try. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or gluten. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's nice to, to hear that, uh, you know, if they put questions or they think on themselves uh, what, what I'm eating, Am I eating right? Am I eating uh, healthy? Am I? And I, mm, thank you, thank you, Peter, <laughs> that you opened this, yeah, subject. <laughs> I mean, when we did the last film in Fabric, it's a shame you were not there, but we showed it in Toronto. It, it was very cathartic when you hear people reacting, mm -hmm. whether they're gasping or laughing. Do you um, prefer laughing or gasping? What do you think? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, no, it's great after all this time to see with an audience. Yeah, I can't deny that. It is kind of catharsis, you know. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice.